So I don't believe it masks it. I, it, it uh, there is pretty good evidence that Benadryl does not treat anaphylaxis. So if you are already meeting criteria for anaphylaxis or cr criteria for giving epinephrine, giving Benadryl is not going to alter that course at all. But if you have a very mild allergic reaction that doesn't yet meet criteria, let's say you um, ate something that you thought maybe was cross-contaminated with something you're allergic to and you ha have a couple of hives, giving Benadryl or another antihistamine is not going to um, alter the course of whether or not that progresses to anaphylaxis. It, it, will, it may treat the, the rash and the discomfort, um, which has a benefit, um, but there's no clear evidence that it, that it alters a reaction that's going to progress. So um, the one thing I, uh, there are a couple caveats to using antihistamines in a reaction that, that you think may progress. One is, if it makes the rash better, you still have to count rash as one of the symptoms. So if you're, if you're trying to get a couple minor symptoms to meet criteria, I would still count rash even if the rash looks better. So for example, you had a rash, you took some Benadryl, now the rash is better, but now you're starting to throw up. Well, that's two systems. So you still count the rash even though it's better. The other is that uh, first generation antihistamines like Benadryl are quite sedating. So, so if you're going to use them and then you become sleepy or you're giving them to their, your child and your child becomes sleepy, that could be mistaken for a sign of anaphylaxis itself. So it's best to use a less sedating antihistamine if you're going to use one so that it doesn't make it more difficult for you to determine if the problem is progressing towards anaphylaxis.